to take glory for my journey now. I've got to make it up to heaven somehow. Go to the devil, tempts me and tries to turn me around. He's all but everything that's got a name. All the wealth I want and worldly fame. If I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. There's nothing in this world that ever take the place of God's love. Silver and gold could never buy his love from above. When my soul needs a evening and I begin to feel his power, I can say thank the Lord I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I've got to make it up to heaven somehow Though the devil tempts me and tries to turn me around He's all but everything that's got a name All the wealth I want and worldly fame If I could still I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now I started out traveling for the Lord many years ago I've had a lot of hearts, it's better than a grieving wound. Oh, and when I would stumble, then I would humble down. And then I would say I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I've got to make it up to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempts me and tries to turn me around. But everything that's got a name All the wealth I want And worldly fame If I could still I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now Well I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now I've got to make it up to heaven somehow Though the devil tempts me and tries to turn me around He's all but everything that's got a name All the wealth I want and what you think, if I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. He's all but everything that's got a name, all the wealth I want. And what you think, if I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. If I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey Good morning, everyone. God bless you all for coming. It's our turn to blend our voices to sing together, and we're taking the first song from our hymn book, hymn number 509. 509. We appreciate the presence of everyone here and those that are joining us by the way of webcast, wherever you may be. May the Lord bless you. We're here to meet with the great God of heaven, who knows the desires of our hearts and the prayers of our hearts, and was here before we even got here. He will attend to all our issues this morning, in Jesus' mighty name. As we're getting ready to sing together, we want to appreciate our choir and orchestra, we started with Wonderful by A.H. Arkley, which was given to us, the orchestra, and then Great is the Lord by J. Fawcett, the choir, gave that to us. And I wouldn't take nothing by Charles Goodman and Jimmy Davis, the male quintet, given by Brother Joshua, Brother Tope, Brother Emmanuel, Brother Samuel and Brother Banji, beautifully sung. May the Lord bless them. Okay, we turn to him 509. They that trust in the Lord are secure. My grace is sufficient for thee. We're going to have Brother Johnson Opo. We come forward to lead us in this and a couple of more other songs for our congregational singing.
We are singing stanzas one, three, and four. And the orchestra will start with the chorus. a home beyond the reach of toil and care, a home where changes never come, who would not fail be resting there? Toil on, not deemed though so it be. One sigh on heart, one prayer for God, the day of rest we done for thee. Wait and meekly wait. Wait and murmur not. We sing standards one, two, three, sitting. Four, we will stand and remain standing to be led in prayer. Thank you. 
remain standing with our eyes closed and our heads bowed. We call on Brother Enyang Ekomabang to please come forward and lead us in congregational prayer. Oh God, the grace to wait a moment not, Father, send it to us. The grace to wait a moment not, Lord, we need it now. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing us here to be blessed. Father, come and bless us. Amen. We are empty. Come and fill us. Amen. We want to be encouraged Amen. to walk on this gospel way. Amen. Jesus, come and help us. Amen. Come and help us. Amen. This afternoon, Lord, we want to rejoice. Rejoice in your word. Amen. When your word comes, Lord, come and energize us. Amen. Come and bless us. Amen. Come and save our souls. Amen. Come and strengthen us. Amen. Come and heal us. Amen. Jesus, come down. Let your power come down. Come and revive us this afternoon. For we pray in Jesus' name. A hearty welcome to every one of you present here in this sanctuary. This beautiful Sunday morning, we pray that the Lord will bless you all. And for those that are joining us on our webcast, www.apostolicfaithworker.org, you are very welcome. We pray that the Lord who is with us there in our tabernacle at the worker headquarters in Anthony, Lagos, Nigeria, we be with you wherever you are. He will certainly answer your prayers. We know that from time to time, through friends and other forms of invitation, we have people that are joining us, especially physically here in Anthony, to be part of our service. We say thank you so much for coming. We pray that the Lord will bless you. We pray that what you have come for today you will get an answer from God and that you will leave this place with the joy of heaven in your soul. In Jesus' mighty name, you are heartily welcome. At the end of the service, after you have prayed very well, we have our helpers at the help desk as well as our greeters and our ushers. They'll be glad to navigate you to where we are prepared to meet with you for your being first time here to let you know how much we value your presence and your determination to be part of this service here today. We'd like to know more about you, just as we believe you too would like to know more about us. Please take advantage of that. But that should be after you've prayed very well at the end of the service. At the end of the service, this morning we're going to have Saints meeting. Is meeting that we call from time to time of saints, those who have been saved from their life of sin, who are members of the Apostolic Faith Church. We're going to have that meeting today after the devotional service. It won't take a, a long time after the service has finished, maybe about 30 minutes thereafter or thereabout. We will um, play the organ and then we expect the saints to gather together for that important meeting. And then in the evening at 5 p.m., we have revival and evangelistic service where you can hear testimonies of those that God has given victories over sin, over other challenges whom God has healed from their various illnesses. We encourage you, as you have decided to be part of this morning service, that you please be part of the evening service as well. Anthony Group 4 members, they will be meeting in the prayer room as they are the one on duty this week. And let us continue our team prayers that we have arranged for our country. We know the Lord is working behind the scene more than we can see because it's a God that hears and answers prayers. Let us join in selecting a time during the course of the week, during the day or during the night, whatever time is convenient for you, 
whatever duration of time is convenient for you, that you want to be part of that chain prayer to call upon the Lord on behalf of Nigeria. There is no way you will pray for your country. I appreciate that there are some other people listening to us, even for your country too. But there is no way you pray for your country that you know remember to pray for yourself. So please be part of that chain prayer and the Lord will bless you. Our services during the week will be as normal, but we want to remind you of Bible study on Wednesday at 6 p.m. and um, prayer meeting on Friday at 6 p.m. as well. And services next Sunday, April the 14th, will be just as we are having today and as displayed on the notice board, beginning with Sunday school for our children at 8.30, Adult and Junior Sunday School at 9, Children's Service 9.40, and Devotional Service, even as we are doing now, at 10.45, Revival and Evangelistic Service at 5 p.m. We want to encourage you to be part of these services. They are free. We do not have collection plates here. We just are concerned about your spiritual welfare. Take advantage of those meetings. Also, at the end of the service, for those that are sick, after you've prayed for yourself and you still want the people of God to pray for you, just as the Word of God enjoined us in the Scripture, that if you are sick, you can call upon the elders of the church to lay hands on you, to anoint you, and pray for you. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. That has been testimonies of many. If you are sick and you have prayed and you still want the people of God to pray for you, please, you can come forward to sit on this um, front row after you've prayed very well. We will have an usher there who will um, help you to the seat of the elders on the platform here where they will pray for you and anoint you. Take advantage of that. Also, prayer request is a tradition here. When you go, please be sure you write prayer requests of anything that you want the Lord to do for you and put in the prayer request. Tray. You don't need to put your name. People of God, we gather this uh, request together and during the course of the week and even when we gather together in the prayer room before we come for the service, the workers usually do that. We will read this prayer request and we will call upon the Lord on your behalf and we know the Lord will answer your prayers. A quick reminder about our sequence of our Sunday school lesson because of some changes that we've made in the past two weeks or so. Um, for our elementary lesson, it's going to be lesson 116 from book three, The Baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is what they are studying during the course of this week for next Sunday. And then for junior and the adult, it's going to be lesson 430 from our current book 33, Heman's Conspiracy and Downfall, will be our lesson for next Sunday. Let us remember that. Shall we listen to this special announcement? Number one, Sister Ibele Chuku Ukamaka Dodinke of Abuja Area Headquarters Church, and Brother Joshua Oti Utuagaha of Anthony Group 3 in Weka Headquarters Church. Number two, Sister Afion Okon and Brother Jacob Oluwa Shegun Agbadubo, both of Ketu Branch Church in Lagos South Area. Number three, Sister Oluwa Tobi Amarachi Oyele of Anthony Group 1 in Weka Headquarters Church, and Brother Charles Oluwa Yemi Oni of Lagos South Headquarters Church. All these three separate groups have decided to be joined together in holy matrimony in this church. This will be their first announcement, and we want to request for those that have any objection, either a group or an individual, to please register this with the ministry immediately. Also, Sister Victoria Adiola Oyelowo 
of Akumajo Branch Church in Lagos Central Area, and Brother Adetayo Eniola Lawal of Idiakwe Branch Church in Oyo Area. This is their second announcement. Again, they have decided to be joined together in holy matrimony in this church. Any objection to this union by any individual or group of people should be registered to the ministry immediately. And moreover, Sister Anolu Akwati Mitokwe Udumusi and Brother Moses Mobuluaji Itonola of Anthony Grufo in Weka Headquarters Church. This is the third and the final announcement. Yeah. Any individual or group of people that fail to register any objection to this holy matrimony should henceforth forever keep their peace. Yeah. We thank God for what the Lord is doing in our church. We have in our church this morning Brother Prince Will Namdi Moore and Sister Joy Uzioma Moore with their well-wishers and friends to rejoice with them as they have brought their first baby to be dedicated to the Lord. Adaugo Shirley Moore, we want to join in praising the Lord on their behalf this morning. Let me say that in our church, while we rejoice with those that rejoice, especially on something of joy like this, we want to take the opportunity to remind all our members that there is no moral significance about the baby dedication. It's simply an outward show of commitment by the parents to bring up the baby that the Lord has given to them in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord as we are enjoined in the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 4. That is all we are doing. We are not baptizing the baby. We are not confirming the baby. We are not doing anything to the baby other than just to say that this is the baby that the Lord has given us. We thank you for your prayers. And now that we want to embark, already embarked, of course, on the journey of bringing up this baby, we need your prayers. We need your commitment. And that is the purpose of this, and that the Lord should um, help them in that respect. And in order to do that, we pause in our service to do this, beginning with a song for the children, hymn number 574. Hymn number 574. We're going to take verses 1, 2, and 3. CGS 574, verses 1, 2, and three. You little ones keep close to God in trembling and humility.
from the scripture. We have many examples in the Bible where little ones were brought to Jesus, either as babies or even when they have grown to some extent. We have that example of actually the one of Jesus himself in the book of St. Luke, the second chapter, reading from verse 21 through to 24, when Jesus was brought into the temple as a baby. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of our purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of thirty doves or two young pigeons. We do not, of course, ask the parents to bring anything to the church other than just the baby to be prayed for. We don't ask for any thirty doves or any cow or any ram, we just want to rejoice by seeing um, baby Shirley brought to the church and we would like to pray for baby Shirley that the Lord will help the parents as they will look up to God when Shirley will be crying or we need something and will not even know how to say it, that the Lord will inspire them, that the Lord will speak to them, that the Lord will lead them. The Lord who has always been doing that for everyone as they are new on this journey, we pray that the Lord who has never failed will not fail them. Okay, I will go down to meet with them so that they don't need to be climbing, I will do the stepping down. Okay, we want to pray for the baby. A dedicatory prayer and we want you to join in that prayer obviously I don't know whether Shirley is sleeping is awake or sleeping she's awake okay so we can we, we are not disturbing her but if she's sleeping we have to be as quiet as we can be She's actually drowsy. She's opening her eyes and closing her eyes. So we will not disturb her uh, attempt to sleep. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, God of mankind, God of love, God of life, we thank you for Prince Will for joy. We thank you for the blessing from above that you have given to them, the gift of Shirley. Lord, accept our thanks. Amen. Father, accept our praises. Amen. When she was in the womb, we were calling on you, we were praying to you that you will see the parents through, and you did so. Lord, accept our thanks. Amen. Here we are with us, evidence of what you have done. Lord, accept our thanks. Amen. You are the one that has given this beautiful gift to them. We pray that you will give them wisdom, Amen. enabling, Amen. understanding Amen. from above Amen. in bringing up Shirley Amen. in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. 
all that they will need to look after her, you will provide. Amen. You will supply. Amen. Answer their prayers. Amen. When they be looking up to you, saying, Lord, what should we do? Appear to them. Amen. Show them what to do. Amen. And when Charlie shall grow to the age of accountability, and she will learn that she needs to be saved, and she will call upon you. God, answer her. Amen. When she will call on you for sanctification, answer her. Amen. When she will call on you for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, answer her. Amen. Whatever will be all that they have to go through, we know they'll be calling on you from time to time, answer them. Amen. Continue to bless them. Amen. Continue to stay with them. Amen. They have not passed through this way before. So they will be relying totally on you. Even though there will be support here and there, but you are the first supporter. Don't fail them, O oh Lord. Amen. Keep looking after them. Amen. We want to be hearing good news. Amen. When Shirley will be among our Sunday school children, Amen. running up and down Amen. to join the Sunday school children program Amen. and to just give our life totally to the Lord. Amen. Do this for her. Amen. Do this for your church. Amen. And we take this opportunity to remember all those that are pregnant. Remember them too. Amen. Let them put to bed hail and hearty. We want to hear from the child and from the mother Amen. that everything is well, Amen. even as you have done this. Amen. And for those that are looking unto you for the fruit of the womb, we take this opportunity, Father, to remember them too. Amen. Let them rejoice too. Amen. Bring their days of rejoicing nearer. Amen. Take all the glory. Amen. Take all the honor. Amen. We pray in the name of God the Father, Amen. the name of God the Son, Amen. in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We ask it all in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. She's very quiet. Thank you, Miss Peter. God bless you. In our church, we have a um, baby dedication certificate that we give, which is called Certificate of Dedication, containing all the details of today, the name of um, the baby, when born, um, where born, the, um, where dedication um, takes place, the pastor that dedicated the baby, and then the name of the parent is a certificate of dedication that I'm presenting to the parent. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I understand that the father has a brief testimony to give, very brief testimony from the father. We're going to listen to that. And at the end of that testimony, we're going straight to our last special, which is Great is Thy Faithfulness by William Royan, and it's a solo which will be taken by Sister Diana Fadiora. We wait now for that testimony. I would like to thank God because God has been wonderful to me. He's a very loving God, and I feel he has been jealous about me and about my life and I want to glorify his name. I thank God for answers to prayers. Um, when we got married, we were thinking, oh, we just made a small prayer that we want, to we want to have the child within the same year because we got married in January. And oh, as, it, as the year went on, we started thinking, okay, maybe next year would be more likely the right answer. But God still did it within that same year. And we thank God that during the delivery, all the process was smooth. And God has brought us back safely and brought my dear wife and my beautiful daughter. I glorify God. Please thank God with me. God bless you.
Kindly open your Bible with me to the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 13, verse 24. Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 13, verse 24. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, we seek to enter in and shall not be able. This morning, the first Sunday in the month of April 2024, that happened to be my birthday month, Jesus said, I should tell the church to strive to enter in at the straight gate. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. What does it mean to strive? To strive, the old Greek word means agonizomai, which means to contend with adversaries, to enter into a contest, to contend with difficulties and in dangers, to, to compete for a prize. to endeavor with strenuous zeal. Jesus said, strive to enter in at the gate. That implies great exertion against great difficulties and specifically suggests persistent effort to achieve or obtain something. We in Lagos State here, some of us are accustomed to the Lagos hustling and bustling when it comes to boarding a bus. In a bus stop, you see a crowd of people waiting for a bus going to a certain place. Maybe there are not enough buses going there. For example, and the bus conductor is shouting, oh, Jue Lego, Jue Lego, and there are many people. You see how everybody is struggling. Whether it's just one seat, whether it's just one seat, you see how people are struggling to enter. Even while the bus is still moving, you see people trying to jump in. See the effort they put to jump in. You may even see some old women, you may think this person is an old woman, you cannot do that. She will even push you aside to jump in. That is Lagos for you. And at times many people will jump into the bus, some people will be hanging, and the conductor will say, it's only one seat. Others go down. With all their struggles, with all their efforts, they will just go down. Only one person. But where Jesus is talking about, there are many seats. Yes. There are many seats. Yes. But one thing is that if you jump in, right. you should continue to strive, right. to remain there. Yeah. It's possible to jump in and jump out. It's possible to jump in and jump out. You know, the danger for the Christian in every age is the mindset that I have arrived. I know it all. I know the doctrine. I know the teachings of Jesus. I am in the kingdom already. That shouldn't be our mindset. The call on this way is a call for daily consecration. We have to strive. Jesus says, strive. No wonder Paul says in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14, verse 22, that is, it is through much tribulation that we enter into the kingdom of God. Are you striving to enter into the kingdom? This is more than just, I want to be in heaven. 
If I ask a question, how many people want to be in heaven, I believe all hands will be up. But ask a question, is there anyone that wants to go to hell fire? Nobody will put up their hand. But if you want to go to heaven, the question is, are you striving to enter into the kingdom? Say, straight is the gate. And this straight gate is nobody but Jesus Christ. No other one but Jesus Christ. In John 10, 17, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And in verse 9, say, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastor. Entering in at the straight gate means the same thing as Jesus told Nicodemus. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You have to strive to confess your sins. It's a strive. It's an effort. You have to confess your sins. You must forsake them. You must believe in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And when you confess and forsake them, believing in that blood, Jesus will forgive you. He will forgive your sins. And you will not stop there. Because it's a, long, a lifelong striving. You will continue to strive to be sanctified for the root of sin to be uprooted from your life. Because without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. You must be holy. Yeah. And when your heart is sanctified, purified, made holy, there and there, the heart is open to receive the third person of, in the Trinity. Amen. And the power will come. Amen. But you must strive Amen. to get it. Oh, yeah. In Matthew chapter 7, 14, 13 and 14, It says there, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in there. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. That is why Jesus said you should strive. That you should strive. The narrow way is the way of holiness. Amen. Amen. The way is clean as the gate. And not one degree wider. The narrow way. Why is it narrow? Is it because it's hard or uninteresting? No way. The pilgrims who have traveled this way, they are the happiest people. Children of God are the happiest people. Because they have found a meaning of, of life. They have a set goal. They know they are going somewhere. Though there are tongues and tastes on the way. But God said, I will see you through. The way is narrow. Because it excludes all sin. No wonder in Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8, it says, and, in a, and, and highway shall be there. And a way and it shall be called a way of holiness. Oh, yeah. The unclean shall not pass over it, oh. but it shall be for those that were very men. Yeah. Those fools right. shall not err there. Yeah. Jesus says, strive. Why, 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 why are we to strive? Last Sunday we heard Jesus say, it is finished. Yeah. He has paid it all. So that, that means we should fold our hands. Jesus has done everything. But Jesus is saying, strive. Strive to enter. It's a competition. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 12 says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. That is why Jesus said, You must strive. When we talk of violence, it's not the literal violent men, but it's talking about men with an overwhelming eagerness. Men that contend. Men that strive to take it. Whatever it will cost them. Whatever it will, it will, it will require from them. I must make it. I must make it. I will not miss it. Though sickness, though pain, though trials, I will make it. May God help us. 
those that strive lawfully. We must strive lawfully. No, to enter into the kingdom requires a great deal of effort. It's not easy. When Jesus called the, the gate straight, he means the, that it is that's the only door. The kingdom of God, the gate of the kingdom of God is only one door. There is no side door, there is no back door. Jesus is the only way. If you pass through any other way, you are a robber or a thief. You are walking the broad and wide and wide road. God will help us this morning. It is a way of trial and persecution. That is where Jesus said you must strive. The songwriter says, it's not an easy road. We are traveling to heaven. For many are the turns on the way. It's not an easy road. There are trials and troubles. And many are the dangers we meet. But thank God. Thank God. He added. But the Savior is with us. His presence gives us joy every day. Amen. Jesus guards and keeps so that nothing can harm us and smooths the rugged path for our feet. Glory be to God. Amen. If you are a Christian, you are going to face and meet resistance in life. There is war against righteousness, against unrighteousness. The war is going. The devil is fighting. You will not be righteous. You must be unrighteous. Jesus says, strive. This is the only way. This is the only way. You must strive in order to make it. You must put effort. People will laugh at you. People will mock at you. You may be misinterpreted. People will speak evil of you. People will hate you for no just cause. But Jesus says, strive. Amen. Jesus says, strive. There may be storms around. Say, looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Let our eyes be focused on Jesus. Amen. When you shift your eyes from Jesus, you will start to sink, just as Peter. Peter walking on the water, looking at Jesus. And when he saw the boisterous wind and the, and, the, and, the, and the storm, he shifted eyes of Jesus. And he started to sink. If you have sunk this morning, God will lift you up. Amen. Strive to enter in. Why should we strive? Why must we strive? The book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 13, says, Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. That is why we must strive. Say, hold that fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. That means there are adversaries and things contending and contesting your crown. There is a crown in heaven for children of God. There are crowns for us of us. But God said, Jesus is saying here, hold that fast, whatever it will take, don't let anything cause you to lose your crown. The devil will contest. The devil will contend with you. The world will contend with you. You know, Paul made a statement in Romans chapter 8, if you read 35, 38 to 39. Say, what shall separate us from the love of God? Say nothing. Is it tribulation? Is it famine? Is it sickness? Is it peril? Say nothing, nothing, nothing. May nothing separate you from the love of Christ. Amen. You may be passing the crucibles. Amen. Jesus will see you through. Amen. He says, strive. Amen. Oh, may God help us Amen. not to trade off our crown with, 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 because of sickness. Because I have no husband. You trade off your crown. I have no child. You trade off your crown. I, have no, I don't have this. I don't have that. Say, hold that fast. Amen. Hold it fast. Amen. Hold it fair. Amen. That no man take your crown. Oh, yeah. Look at somebody like Esau. Because of hunger, he sold his birthright. May you not say your birthright. Amen. You know, the adversary will capitalize on the current situation you find yourself. 
It will bring certain things to dampen your faith. Say, why not try this? Oh, the way you are praying is not the right way. Why not try this fanatical type of prayer? You will not be fanatical type of prayer. You now will not try this type of prayer. Why not try, try this type of fasting? To dampen your faith because that the adversary has seen your situation. If I sell this material, ah, he or she will buy it immediately. But I want you, in that hour of trial, I want you to say like David, I have not proved this. Yeah. Here in this church, yeah. we have proved that prayer works. Yes. God answers prayer. Yes. God answers prayer. Yes. But we must pray the right way. Yes. You must pray the right prayer. We have tracks, prayer that God answers, the right way to pray. Read it. In simple humility, we, 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 we came to God here oh, yeah. and knelt down and confessed our sins. Oh, yeah. Jesus saved our soul. Oh, yeah. And we continue his sanctified us. Oh, yeah. And he filled us with the spirit. Oh, yeah. It's so wonderful. Oh, yeah. The power of God coming down from heaven. Oh, yeah. What we read in the Bible, oh, yeah. that on the day of Pentecost, oh, yeah. the, the disciples, they were waiting. They have been saved and sanctified. Oh, yeah. That the power of God came upon them. Oh, yeah. And you believe it. Oh, yeah. And you pray and God sent the power. Oh, what wonderful. Yeah. And somebody will come to teach you. Or oh, you have to learn how to speak in tongues. He wants to put you out of the way. Yeah. That is not the right way. Yeah. God hears and answer prayers here. Yeah. Yeah. When you were saved, challenges came and you pray, God solved it. Yeah. You will see God solve it. Yeah. And now somebody is telling you, God does not answer prayers again. He's a liar. Yeah. God hears and answer prayers. Yeah. No matter the sickness, no matter what is confronting you. It, it, maybe it's just God that allowed you there. He wants you to strive more. Yeah. He wants to try you. Yeah. He wants to refine you. Because heaven is a prepared, a, a prepared place for a prepared people. Yeah. All right. No lazy Christian will enter there. He wants to strengthen you. Yeah. He wants to ginger you yeah. so that you fight. Yeah. No, 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 no sitting at the offensive. You carry the wall and say, God, by your grace, give me this mountain. Yeah. And I will subdue this mountain. That is how to strive. Amen. Sickness will come. Say, sickness, get behind me. Amen. God is powerful to heal. Yeah. He said, I am the Lord that healed thee. God is wonderful. Yeah. And God, maybe he has planned and said, no way, this is not time. Uh, we told you something. You don't know. The devil is an accuser. It's an accuser of the brethren. Yeah. He will have said, oh, you said this person is striving. He wants to go to heaven. Now we told something. We throw something from her life or his life and see if he will not deny you. May nothing cause you to deny Christ. Amen. This is the best way to travel. Yeah. Say you must strive. Yeah. You remember that man of God when he was passing the crucibles. Job. And he was told, why not deny God? Job said, though he slay me, yeah. though he slay me, Yet we like trust him. That is how to strive. Amen. Romans 12 1 says that I beseech you, brethren, that you present your body a living sacrifice, oh, yeah. wholly acceptable to God, Amen. which is your reasonable service. Amen. Any other service or reasonable service. Yes. Present your body a living sacrifice. Right. You cannot carry the vessels of God with sin in your life. Oh. It's unreasonable service. Oh. You strive. Daily consecration. Paul say, I die daily. Right. You must die daily. Oh, yeah. When this flesh say, I need to say flesh, sit down. You will not, you don't need it. It's against the will of God. I pray this morning. Because in that end of that verse 24, he said, many, many will try to enter, but they will not be able. Does it mean there is no accommodation in heaven? To accommodate all the whole wide world? There are. There are accommodations. Say, I go to prepare a mansion. If I go, I will come back. Amen. I will come and receive you. Amen. That's the promise of God. Oh, yeah. But because these people, who, who may not be able to enter in, they are just relying on their self-righteousness. They are carrying the load of pride. They are carrying the load of hatred, bitterness, unforgiving spirit. And they are walking, thinking they are uh, uh, on, the, on the narrow road. Oh, may God have mercy. Yeah. Some will think I am born in this gospel. It's a heritage. 
I am born in this gospel. I am in the kingdom. Being born in this gospel is different from being born again. Being born again. And those people, the word of God says, if you read that Luke, uh, Luke 13, if you read from verse 25, he says there that many will come. Many will come that last day. And say, when the door, say the master of the door will rise and shut the door. We don't know when the door will be shut. This message is for both the righteous and the unrighteous. Both the newcomer and the person that have been here for many years. We must try to the end. I told you earlier on, you know, it's one thing to enter the compound of a, a, a man. When you, when you enter the gate, you have not arrived until you enter the man's room who has invited you. At the gate, you may just open the gate and the doors will bat, whoa, 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 and you run away. Have you entered the room? The word of God says that the devil is a roaring liar. When you enter the gate that is Jesus Christ and you are saved from your love of sin, the kingdom of God has started in your heart. Amen. But the devil will roar. Jesus, is, Jesus is said, I have gone to prepare a place. Amen. That kingdom come. His kingdom is coming. The kingdom starts in our heart until he will set up that kingdom on earth. But you must continue to strive. Yeah. Nothing will stop me. Yeah. Sickness will not stop me. Yeah. Hunger will not stop me. Yeah. Poverty will not stop me. Yeah. I must strive. I must make it. Yeah. That is the goal. Yeah. Say, they will come and say, Master, you remember, don't you know us? We were there when you fed 5,000 people. Uh-huh. We were there when you taught on, 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 in our street. We were there when you did this and that. May that not be a portion of yeah. As many will come that day. I was born in the gospel. I was brought up in the gospel. God forbid that anybody should say that. I was brought up in the gospel. I know the doctrine. I know this, I know that. I participated in all the programs. And the word of God said, Jesus said, I don't know you. It's not that he, he, does, he doesn't know them as knowing people. Jesus is telling them, we don't have a relationship. Right. All your religion, all your worship was outward one. Uh-huh. Your name is not in my book. Uh-huh. Your name is not there. You were just doing eye service. You were just singing and praying and doing everything. You, 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 we didn't have any relationship of love. There was no relationship. So that's why Jesus said, I don't know you. And the next part is, next part it is, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Say, so these people will be cast in the outer darkness, right. where there will be gnashing of teeth, weeping and crying. Hell is a terrible place. Yes. Hell is a terrible place. Yes. May God help you not to be there. Yes. May God help me not to be there. Yes. That is why this morning, you know, when the soloist was singing, great is thy faithfulness, I said, God, great is thy faithfulness. Oh, yeah. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, yeah. For exposing us to this sound doctrine. Amen. For bringing this word of life. The altar is open, I want to strive. Do you want to strive this morning? God, I want to be saved. God, I want to be sanctified. Strive by confessing your sins. Strive now. Jesus will meet you at the point of your need. God bless you as you pray. In 566.
We thank you for the word of God you have sent to us this morning. Lord Jesus, come and search our hearts. You know us in and out. You know we are we are short, we have shortcomings. We want you to come and search us this morning. We want to reign with you. You said we, we should strive to enter into the straight gate. Lord, we want to reign with you. We want to be with you in heaven. We don't want anything on earth here to debar us from getting to heaven. Jesus, please come and help us. Strength, uh, um, power and strength we don't have. But we have you, Lord. You are, you are all in love for us. You can hold our hand and take us to heaven. Jesus, come and hold our hand. Jesus, come and help us. All those people that are here to enter into that uh, straight gate, Jesus, please come and save their souls today. Come and sanctify today. Come and baptize, Lord. All of us, Lord, we want to reign with you in heaven. We don't want anything to be an hindrance on our way. Jesus, wash us with your precious blood. We want to be with you in heaven. You said you have gone to heaven to prepare a place for us. That where you are, we will be also. Jesus, come and take us to heaven. We want to be with you. We want to reign with you. At the end, we want to, to have fullest cause to glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.